Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by Mr. Muskie Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskiecharters.com. Do you have a hunting invention and don't know where to turn? With over 25 years of experience in the hunting industry, Greg Abbas has helped hundreds of inventors reach their dreams and can help you too. To find out more, visit our website or give us a call today. Hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Olson and we've got an exciting show for you this week. We're going to take you out to do something that we haven't done here on the show in a few years and that's bow fishing. We'll be out on Saginaw Bay at night with bow and arrow chasing after carp and a couple of other species. You won't want to miss that story. And Jimmy and Jordan also have some fun in store for us this week too. Well, that's right, Jenny. We have a few more things on this week's show. Jordan Brown is going to take us on a National Wild Turkey Federation hunt that is really aimed at getting new people into the outdoors. You won't want to miss that. And I'm going to sit down with a father-son photography team that has a new book out. You won't want to miss it. Just some beautiful images of the great state of Michigan. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy the wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Grilly Grills of Holland, Michigan. Makers of wood pellet, charcoal grills, and professional pellet smokers. Grilla Grills are designed for ease of use to improve your grilling and smoking skills. More information at GrillaGrills.com. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at AnglerQuestPontoons.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. A couple of Sundays ago, I met up with Mike Brown and a few of his buddies for a night of bow fishing. We would be launching at a public access site over in the Thumb and fishing Saginaw Bay. The guys were getting the boat set up and waiting for the sun to go down before they headed out. You can go during the day or at night. Um, obviously, we're going to be going at night as soon as the sun gets down here. Um, we got a bunch of lights set up, um, really easy. Um, don't have to have the biggest boat, don't have to have anything too special. Troll along. Um, once the sun gets down, these lights really reflect through that water and bounce off those fish really good. So, you get a good sight on them, um, good show, and hardest thing setting them. So, <laughs> but well, we should be able to find a bunch here and we'll we'll get it figured out. You don't have a peep sight and a regular pen sight or nothing like that. You just, it's natural instinct. You oh, let them go. Um, there's a couple different style reels you can do. We got a spin cast style reel here. This is made by Muzzy. Um, so just like a regular fishing pole, you got your free spool and your line will come out. And then once you hit a fish, you start reeling them in. Uh, kind of mess with your drag, really fight the fish when you get on those some big ones. Uh, then the more traditional or more common um, bow fishing reel setup is an AMS style. Um, these are always on a free spool, um, so they are all you don't ever have to worry about pushing a button or anything like that. And then when you want to reel them in, you pull this lever, um, puts pressure on the line, and you can go to town. A um, little bit more going on with it, but definitely the more popular setup. Um, this bow right here, I think, retails for right around. Four hundred fifty, five hundred dollars. That's you know you don't have to get into that. A lot of times, go to a local pawn shop or a used store. You can find a used kids bow or a youth bow for twenty, thirty, forty dollars, and you can get real setups for about the same money. So you don't have to spend a lot to get into it, and it's it's fun. 
So. Yeah, you don't need to pull back 70 pounds. You know, 30, 40 pounds is more than enough. Yep. How far uh, are your shots? You know, 10 yards is a lot. Okay. You know, that night, you know a, lot, a lot yeah. of times, if you're standing on top of that deck, they'll be right the boat. 10, 15 feet off the boat. Wow. So, up the close and personal. Joining Mike tonight were his hunting and fishing buddies, Dave Smith, Corey Braun, and Danny Oglinski. We were starting a little earlier than normal, just so I could get a few camera shots before dark. Mike says there are a couple of different ways to approach bow fishing. So, when we're doing this, you know, a lot of guys bow fishing when I have air boats. Fans. And uh, fans and generators and stuff. Uh, my setup, we run nice and quiet, all off batteries, get to talk and listen to the radio and everything. Uh, but downfall of that, obviously, you got a troll motor down in the water. So you got to watch out for obstacles, rocks, sticks, um, shallow parts. But another downfall of it on top of it, if you have lines down in there, stuff can get rattled up. Um, right now, it's not quite spawning time. Um, water temps got to get up a little bit more for that. Um, but they're just in shallows right now, just hanging out, getting ready for that. We're within 10 degrees of where they really want to start spawning and stuff. So it's uh, getting to be prime time, but not quite there. Another week or two, we should be right in it. So, As darkness set in, the guys started seeing some fish activity. There's a koi. Oh, got him, Mike. Nice shot. <laughs> There you go. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, we are out here targeting mainly carp, um, gar, goldfish, um, and Quill dogfish, back. quillback, uh, and catfish if we run across yep. them. Um, but fish identification is pretty key. Obviously you don't want to be out here shooting bass. We've seen some walleye, a lot of pike. Um, those are not legal to bowfish for. Um, you got to take those by hook and line. Out here on the water, chasing fish with bows, there's plenty of room for error. But with four guys, someone's usually there to back you up. Oh, my arrow. Stuck him, Danny. Nice shot. <laughs> and that also happened. <laughs> Good deal. We don't eat them. <laughs> uh, some guys do. We have a local farmer that uh, um, takes them as manure. We throw them in his compost pile, and he spreads them throughout his fields year round. Um, he's been really happy to work with us on that kind of stuff. There is a proper way to dispose of them. Um, bull fishing community sort of gotten a bad rap lately. Been a couple bad apples out there that just toss them in the ditch bank or leave them at the dock or something like that. That's not by any means what we do with them. We more, more than responsible enough with our fish and make sure they get put to good use. So. The carp, you can get into you know, average pound on them is probably going to be 12, 15 pounds, but they get up to 30, 35. So there's a chance we seen a big one last night that we couldn't get an arrow into, but we're hoping we can track him down tonight. So. While some folks choose to eat carp and some use them as a nutrient-rich fertilizer, they offer a great opportunity to hone your archery skills for fall. Common carp are an invasive species. Um, they eat all the eggs of the, our game fish, perch, uh, walleye, pike. And uh, basically, don't have any real predators. There, there, there's no, yeah, there's no real predators on them. Um, but they can come in and just completely demolish, uh, uh, you know, a fish hatchery. I mean, we could come out here every day during the summertime and still not put an impact on, on the population of these things. We're just trying to basically do our part to help the game fish. Bow fishing for carp helps build other fish populations and is a great social sport. It's fun, it's just <laughs> relaxing, you know, you go deer hunting, um, same reason I like waterfowl hunting, you go deer hunting or something like that, it's fun and everything, but you gotta be quiet, gotta worry about your scent, you know, can't move around this, you can go out with a couple buddies, have a good time, listen to some music, and you get to shoot more than once, so it's uh, <laughs> always a fun time. So. We've been going on this, I think this is our third year doing this, so we're by no means experts, but we are getting better every trip. But we're uh, we're always trying out some new spots, and this is uh, only our second time at this location. We had a little bit of a tip yesterday, came out, scouted it, shot really good, came back, and it's looking like it's going to be a pretty good barrel so far. So. Looking forward to the end of the night. <laughs> Do you guys try to fill that barrel up when you come? We try to. We try to. <laughs> yes, we can. Yep. These guys were on their way to filling up the 110-gallon barrel on board, and they were pulling off some great shots. But there's also a lot of missing that happens out here, too. Take a look. Oh, just 
just underneath them. <laughs> Bow fishing is a lot of laughs for sure, and Mike says there's places to bow fish all around the state. We're going off a public access launch. Um, like I said, one of the Great Lakes. You can, we've gone all the way down to Lake St. Clair, um, Saginaw Bay, a lot of tournaments all over the place. We were in Standish last weekend. Um, tonight we're over in the Thumb. A lot of the waters that we're going to be in is going to be four foot or less. Um, all depends on what your boat can really get into. Um, but four foot or less, pretty common, and you do a lot of times just troll the shoreline, get up into some of the channels and cuts. Uh, you find a little pocket here and there, those fish will get fed up in there and, and held up. But uh, not like you got to have a secret honey hole or you got to be out there 30 foot of water chasing walleye or anything. It's right on shore. That's why I say you don't even really need a boat. A lot of guys will throw on waders and go out there and wait and do it. So it's very doable without, you know, big boats or anything. So. Cool. Yeah, that's so this nose. is a long nose gar. Yep. Nice <laughs> shot. That's a skinny fish to yep. hit. Sweet. Not much bigger than the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Bow Fishing Association of Michigan has an event coming up, as Mike explained. Um, BAM for short. <laughs> and uh, they hold numerous tournaments throughout the state. Um, they had one down on Lake St. Clair, one on the west side of the state. Um, Standish last weekend, Sea Wing coming up, Fletcher's Pond, and Point Moulet. And um, on June 9th, they're actually doing a, a really neat event. It's free to the kids, um, but they're doing a kids hunt or a kids um, fishing tournament. Anyone that has a boat or is in the sport or anything like that, I'd highly suggest reaching out to BAM. They're always looking for guys to take kids out. Um, it's a good event to get out there, watch some kids, you know, get them into the sport, watch them have fun. I was even able to put down the camera and stick a couple of carp too. It's a riot. It is. Thanks for it bringing is. me out here, guys. You betcha. Sweet. <laughs> I'm adding to the barrel. <laughs> yes. <Woo! laughs> Special thanks to Mike Brown and the guys for an awesome night on the water. Chasing carp with a bow and arrow can be as simple or as complex as you want to make it. But no matter how you choose to do it, bow fishing is a great way to battle with some fish and hone your archery skills this summer, right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. For our next segment on this week's show, I was down in Barry County to cover an event designed to get more adults into turkey hunting. And it all took place on a pretty unique piece of property. The Institute sets on 742 acres out here in Barry County, Michigan. Um, we really try to focus on, on education, environmental education. Our mission statement is to inspire um, stewardship and appreciation of our environment. So we try to do that through our, our educational programs. And that's K through 12 programming, where we have uh, multiple field trips, different schools from around the area will come out here and, and visit throughout the summer and spring and the school year. And then we also have this um, undergraduate research program. So we have a consortium of colleges and universities that are part of this biological field station. That's kind of our bread and butter, that's our niche. So we're able to do research on the property and then inform land managers on how, you know, maybe best management practices on how to restore habitat, create habitat. Um, we also operate as a nature center. So we have over nine miles of hiking trails. We're open to the public. The Pierce Cedar Creek Institute does a great job educating the next generation about the outdoors. But today, we are here with a room full of adults to learn everything you need to know about turkey hunting. We brought them uh, out here at this uh, at Pierce Cedar Creek Institute. We have a lot of great uh, hunting opportunities there. 
Uh, we did a little seminar on uh, game laws, uh, brought in some our DNR uh, uh, conservation officers and they did a little segment on that. Uh, we have our regional biologist, uh, Ryan Boyer, that came in and uh, did a uh, segment on the biology of the wild turkey, the habitat you look for. Uh, and then we took them on an on a actual turkey hunt uh, uh, this, this morning. Uh, last night we sat around the campfire and just kind of worked the turkey calls and, and uh, had a kind of a relaxed atmosphere. And uh, it's kind of neat for a lot of people that uh, somewhat have, uh, might be kind of intimidated because they're around professional hunters or whatever, uh, they, they uh, get intimidated. We wanted to create that atmosphere for people to feel relaxed and uh, uh, learn how to turkey call. We're really focusing more on younger adults or adults in general. The problem that we have with a lot of our youth events uh, right now is that uh, uh, they're a more of a one and done type deal where uh, the, the youth don't have the support system to help get them out uh, for future events. Where if we train the adults, then they are gonna raise their kids and, and uh, into the hunting field. So it, uh, our focus is more on the uh, older, uh, the, the young adults, and uh, uh, we even have some retirees that are now taking up hunting, you know, and stuff, and, and they take their grandkids out. And so we're training more of the, the people that's gonna train the, 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 the next generation of hunters. For this hunt, I was in the blind with two first-time turkey hunters, both women, that had signed up for this program to learn the ins and outs about turkey hunting. The morning hunt couldn't have started much better with a group of jakes working their way in and several longbeards in the field behind them. For the last uh, two and a half years, we've been uh, working with the uh, hunter recruitment session. We have a situation in Michigan and, uh, and throughout the United States, and that's uh, loss of hunters. Uh, in Michigan alone, we're losing 7,000 hunters a year. And we're creating these, organ these uh, uh, events to help uh, take care of that problem, try to recruit more and more hunters to help get out in the woods. Um, because if we don't have uh, the, the, the hunting out there, we don't have the dollars that it uh, takes to create habitat for, uh, to retain wildlife. And uh, so uh, without the wildlife, you know, if we, we don't have that, uh, uh, we don't have anything to hunt and uh, everything kind of it keeps on decreasing, you know, and stuff. So we're trying to create hunter recruitment and that's all part of this uh, event that we're doing here at Pierce, Pierce Cedar Creek Institute. Well, the birds followed the script about perfect this morning, but we could never find a shot that we were completely comfortable with. The jakes just wouldn't separate and although the long beard did give us a few opportunities, it just never quite worked out. That being said, it was an incredible morning in the turkey woods. The rest of the morning was pretty slow, so we decided to head back in to see how some of the other hunters had done and get a few tips on how to process your turkey. Once again, I was going to show everybody, there's a lot of people out there. In fact, I would say that 90% of the turkey hunters will usually just take a knife and cut it off. Well, you got all that meat on there. When you cut it off, that ends up stinking, you know? That you, that you get you have to put borax on it, but if you grab a hold of the beard, all the strands on the beard, and just give it a quick yank, once again, that is a feather, so it just pops right off there and just plucks just like a regular feather. And a lot of people don't even realize that, you know, so. So this is the first year we've done this partnership with the National Wild Turkey Federation to have a mentored turkey hunt out here at the Institute. Uh, we've got great turkey habitat. We have a huge turkey population. So we thought that now was the right time to partner on this, this event. Um, it was a re really great because this is an education event. So we're teaching hunters how to hunt. You know, these first time hunters, um, they're able to go out there, learn about what quality habitat looks like, even how to manage habitat in a way. They learn about turkey biology. Um, just great partnerships. The DNR, you know, partnered with us on a grant to help you know, improve some of this, this habitat out here. And we were able to kind of pass that on to hunters because ultimately hunters are the number one conservation source in America right now. That's what our system's kind of founded on. So 
Um, it's a way for us to increase opportunities for hunters while also educating them. So it was just a great, great event. We never did get a bird hitting the ground on camera, but several other hunters in camp were successful. Special thanks to everyone involved in this event for doing their part in getting more people involved in hunting. Well, we here in the state of Michigan are pretty spoiled. We have beautiful places all around our state. What we're gonna do right now is sit down with a father and son photography team who does a really good job of capturing the beauty of the great state of Michigan. Tucked away on the main drag in downtown Ludington is a father-son photography team that sees the world differently than most. Their images are amazing. So when I heard they had a new book out, I had to come see what this new venture was all about. We were people that were like salmon. You know, we grew up in Ludington, Michigan. We had to come back here. We needed to live here. Our hearts were here. And so the first book obviously had to be Ludington and then Brad's in my first book, Lake Michigan point to point was Ludington area on the water. So Big Point Sobble to Little Point Sobble. So basically Ludington State Park to Silver Lake State Park and that was home. And then after doing uh, Ludington State Park, which was like a really tight book, but one of the best places in the world. So, so we just kept uh, picking things we loved and we knew people loved. Capturing the beauty of Michigan is something these guys do so well. And anytime they have a new book released, well, it's pretty special. So for this project, uh, we go to Old Mission Point, Grand Traverse Point, Sleeping Bear, Work Away South, Ludington, uh, and then on down to Holland. And uh, we've even got a little bit of Kent County because I love the farmlands there and so does Brad. So people, a connotation of people who don't mich know Michigan, they very often are thinking of a uh, very developed cityscapes and uh, and uh, industrial or or kind of kind of tired industrial, but Michigan is a very vital state. There's so much beauty down there in Southeast Michigan. You just got to know how to find it, you know. So we love that, and we we love the East Coast of Michigan, and we love getting up around Alpena and all those places. And but but we really love the West Coast of Michigan. The, we call it the Sunset Side, and. Uh, and of course, we know it better. And uh, we think the west coast of Michigan and then on up into the UP, um, it's world class, it's, it's, it's unbeatable. And there's places over on the east coast that if you want to get up for, for a sunrise that, that are equally equally so. Uh, you just got to get out there and you got you to gotta dare to break your habits. I mean, we're, we, we tend to be creatures of habits, you know. You know, we, we always go to X, you know. and. Uh, so yeah, go to X, but squeeze in a trip to Y. That's, that's our advice to people. Great advice indeed. Now the gallery here is something to see. And as I hit the road with these guys, I asked Brad if they plan out their shoots or is stuff along the way where it really ends up making a great photo. I would say it's probably 75% the destination shot ended up being the winner, but sometimes it's that 25% that hidden surprise and they blow everything else out of the water. And we love that, you know, the, the hidden gem and Michigan is just full of them. So that's always a really fun thing for us to experience, especially when we have workshop students with us and we're taking a whole train of people in automobiles and we'll stop trucks and get out and, you know, photograph a fawn or some wildflowers that we found. And that's just the beauty of Michigan. I was curious, as you try to capture West Michigan in this latest book, how do they decide what to shoot and where to start? The North and South kind of went along with the calendar. Um, the North is beautiful in the winter and fall, so we kind of more went that way. In the summer, we spent more time in the South, Holland, um, Grand Haven, that area. Um, but Michigan's beautiful all year round, so we Sometimes my dad would go north, I'd go south, sometimes we'd go together. It was probably 50-50 um, solo ventures, him and I going our own ways, and then the other times going together. I prefer when we go together or with the other team members from Team Reed at the gallery. I like shooting with other people. Uh, my dad, he kind of enjoys being solo sometimes, so uh, we all beat to our own drum. 
Todd and Brad Reed capture this state and its beauty in such a unique and special way. If you're exploring the state this summer and find your way to Ludington, stop in and say hello and check out their latest work. Our state has so much to offer, and thanks to this father and son team for bringing it to all of us here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stay tuned over the next few weeks. We have a jam-packed schedule for you. We'll show you some late season turkey hunting, bass fishing, walleye fishing, all sorts of fun headed your way. You can always check it out online. Well, that's right. You can check us out online anytime at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there. We're also on several different social media platforms if you'd like to check us out there. And if you do the YouTube thing, you can actually subscribe to Michigan Out of Doors TV and get an email every time we post something new, something you might want to check out. Lots of good stuff coming over the next several weeks here on your PBS station. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. Michigan's hunters and anglers are essential partners to the health of the state's wildlife and habitats. The Michigan Wildlife Council is dedicated to ensuring our hunting and fishing heritage and Michigan's natural resources are preserved for future generations. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. With its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses, Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises is on the web at picturedrocks.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with Night and day, it's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above.